Hello and happy May. It is Tina today with the amazing crafting products feature for the month. I'm going to show you how I made these three ATC cards using uh, the stamps from the kit and some amazing crafting products. So what I'm going to do is actually create a mold from the one stamp um, that was included in the May kit. So I'm using this round one right here. I'm just covering it with some um, cooking oil, some just regular vegetable oil, just so the mold putty doesn't stick to the stamp. So you just see me applying some of the oil directly to the stamp. Now I'm going to take out the amazing mold putty. Um, this is included actually in the April add-on kit, which there are still some available in the store right now. So you can see me pulling out the yellow portion and there's a white portion. And what you do with the amazing mold putty is take out equal portions of both and then you mix them together to create your mold. So you can see me mixing it um, right there. You want it mixed up enough so it's a solid yellow color. So you don't want to see any of that white, not even little streaks of white in your mold. Um, you just work it really well, make sure it's uh, mixed up really well. Um, once you get that mixed together, you can see me just working really hard. And I actually realized after I had started mixing it, I had way too much mold putty here. So uh, I only used half of it for this project, and then I pulled out um, half to make a mold out of something else. So um, you can see me just keep mixing it really well. It took a little bit of time to do that. So now I'm going to roll up the portion that I'm going to use for my stamp mold. Um, I'm just creating a little ball of it. And then what I'm going to do is take the stamp and kind of roll it right into the mold to create a good impression. And I'm pushing down so I do create a lip on the outside. So once I pour the resin into the mold, then it will it'll be fine. So I'm going to set that aside for hmm, probably about five, ten minutes and the mold will set. So it, it sets pretty quickly. So you can see I set it aside and the mold is, is harder now. It's still flexible but hard. And you can see me taking out the stamp. From now I've got a mold. So what I'm going to do now is take some of the um, resin. This is the white resin, not the clear casting resin. And I'm mixing some up. And I'm just mixing a small bit because I don't need a whole lot for my mold. And you can see it's milky looking right there, kind of a milky white in color. You want to mix it until it's clear. You don't see any, again, any of that milky milkiness to the resin. It doesn't take too long to mix, but just make sure you mix it thoroughly. So then once I am got that mixed up, I poured it right into my mold. And I'm going to actually let this go ahead and sit while you're watching it so you can see the resin to actually when it cures so it'll start to turn white when it cures and white's okay because I'm going to paint these up so you can just watch the screen and you'll see the clear gradually turn to white and so the thicker areas will turn faster it'll cure faster than the thinner areas because it is a heat reaction um, so you can just see it as it's it's curing it'll get um, more white and more white and I think the span of time for this whole process was maybe five minutes or so. I actually set it aside just to make sure it completely cured as I was working on my project. So you can see it right there how fast it goes and it's starting to cure right there. So I did this several times because I used three of them for my ATC cars. So I just did the same thing three times. Super fast, super easy. I already had my mold. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the mold out. Um, I actually think um, my mold was wet. And that's why you'll see when the resin comes out, part of the mold actually came with it. Um, I was reading on the Amazing Crafting Products site, and I think my mold was wet, and I think that's what caused it. So what I did was take now my cured hardened resin and I painted it in various colors and I knew I wanted one kind of in a purple color, one in a blue color, one in a yellow color. So I just painted them that way. Now I'm adding a little bit more texture to it so I'm just taking another one of um, Natalie's stamps that was in a different one of her stamp sets and I'm just embossing it with some gold embossing powder. Um, that stamp that I'm using wasn't in the one in the May kit, but it was just another one of her new stamps. And I did that with all three of the pieces. So now I'm going to take my ATC cards, and I've already prepped them with just a thin layer of spray gesso. 
and I'm using the fresco finish paints and I watered them down and I really really love how they looked watered down it's this awesome like chalkiness this matte chalkiness to it um, so you can see me just applying different colors of the fresco paints and again these are most of the colors are available in the store actually when I did my project I only had a few of the colors the other colors came in after I was already done so I'm going to just start building some layers of color on each one of my ATC cards so you can again you can see one's yellow one's blue and one's purple and I'm kind of going with a theme for each one of those um, I love the I love these colors and I love the mattiness of it I'm a shimmery girl too but I like I like this matte chalkiness of these paints a, a lot and I really like them when they were watered down and you can see definitely that the purple one, the pansy color, was more of an opaque. The other two are translucent colors, and you can see that a lot on these ATC cards. So you can see me just building more color. I'm going to apply some of the cotton floss, I can't think, or cotton. I don't remember exactly what it was called. Onto the yellow card, and I'm just blending it a little bit with some water. Um, adding some of the um, pumpkin soup, I think that's the one. Um, that I'm adding on there which was included in the make kit onto my blue cards that create kind of a gradient of greens and then I'm going to add some more of that pumpkin soup onto my um, purple card as well again just to add some texture and dimension to each one so they're not a flat color on the cards I like mixing a bunch of different colors See, it's super easy, and they actually blend really nice. Um, I was curious because I use distress paints quite a bit. Obviously, these don't aren't reactive like a distress paint is, um, but I, I I like that matte chalky feeling where the distress paints can get a little glossy. Um, these ones aren't so much, and I, I liked I really like that feature of these paints. So now what I'm doing is just building some of the elements. So I also made some um, broken Charlotte resin pieces. I actually had a real one and I created a mold out of it just like I made created the mold from the stamp and I actually it was nice because I created the mold where it had a flat back so it would sit flat instead of a rounded back that a real one would have and now I've got a mold because I love those pieces and they are very expensive to buy so I just made three of them and um, I'm using each one of those on the ATC card so again to kind of keep with the color theme on each one of the cards I'm using some more of that watered down fresco paints and the different embellishments the metal embellishments that I'm using on each ATC card I covered them first with gesso and now I'm just applying some of the different colored paints again in each one of the themes so kind of the purple green theme um, the bluish um, yellow theme and then the yellow kind of pinkish theme so I'm just building onto all my different elements so then I can um, put the whole ATC cards together here in a little bit. And I'm just using random pieces that I had in my stash, just different metal pieces and um, nuts and bolts. And then to add a little bit of glimmer, and I did these on the um, cards a little bit, um, or not on the cards, on the resin stamp pieces. I'm adding some Lindy sprays. I'm just using it as a wash across to add a little bit of glimmer and just a little bit more depth of color. And you can see me just putting in, again, the same colors that I have in my stash for it. So then what I did was just take all my pieces, once they were all dry, and I assembled each one of the ATC cards. I used similar elements in each one to create a common theme across the three. And that was it for my ATC card. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial today. And I would love to see what type of molds um, and casted pieces that you've created with amazing crafting products as well. Thanks for stopping by.